With season 6 finished, the stage is set for a lot of big things to happen. Daenerys is riding over to Westeros with a huge army, Arya is finally back, and Jon has been crowned King of the North. Here are my top 7 predictions for season 7. Number 7. Arya and Melisandre are going to meet again. You're a witch. You're going to hurt him. I see a darkness in you. And in that darkness, eyes staring back at me. Brown eyes. Blue eyes. Green eyes. Eyes you'll shut forever. We will meet again. So Melisandre predicted that Arya would go blind and become one of the faceless men, so we have no reason to doubt that they are going to meet again. And remember that Melisandre was exiled from Winterfell in the north, and Jon Snow tells her to head south and never to come back. The last time we saw Arya in Season 6 was at House Frey, which is located at the Twins. And we were given a hint as to where she is headed next. A girl is Arya Stark of Winterfell. And I'm going home. And yeah, Arya could have meant that she's just heading back to Westeros, but I think she means that she's going back to Winterfell to meet up with the rest of her family. And even if she isn't, Mel is still heading south, so a crossing of paths is very likely. Adding on to this, we may see a reunion between the Hound and Arya. The Brotherhood Without Banners and the Hound are currently in the Riverlands, uh, the same area in which Arya was last seen. They are heading north, so a run-in with either Arya or Mel is not out of the question. Number 6. Littlefinger will die. So Littlefinger has been doing much of the manipulating over the past 6 seasons, but I think his time is soon coming to an end. He definitely did not think that any of the Northern Lords would back a bastard, but they did. Sansa also rejected him, and you can just see by the look on his face that his, t that his plan totally backfired on him. He wanted the Iron Throne with Sansa by his side, and he has never been farther away from attaining his goal. I think we will see Littlefinger continue to try and persuade Sansa to turn against Jon, but although it may have been achievable in prior seasons, I think manipulating Sansa is out of the question now. Sansa firmly knows where she stands and who she stands with, and I think in the end we will see her manipulate him into ruin. I also found this pretty ironic. A man with no motive is a man no one suspects. Always keep your foes confused. If they don't know who you are or what you want, they can't know what you plan to do next. Now obviously Littlefinger doesn't think of Sansa as a foe, but she definitely doesn't think of him as her friend either. And he broke both of his rules with her. She knows exactly who he is and what he's capable of, and Sansa knows precisely what he wants. Another thing to note when talking about Littlefinger is that he doesn't have very many friends. In fact, I'd say his only friend right now and the only reason he has any power is because Robin is very fond of him. But I wonder how he'd react if he found out that Littlefinger was the one who pushed his mother to her death. And I would say that it's not out of the question that Sansa would alert Robin to this fact. Littlefinger was the one who gave her in the first place to Ramsay, and I think one more sketchy move like that and she will end him. Number 5. Sam will find something of importance at the Citadel. So Sam finally arrived at the Citadel, and we'll be talking to the Archmaester about his irregular visit. But this whole business of becoming a maester for the Night's Watch is not Sam's real purpose. I think we will see Sam discover something about how to defeat the White Walkers while looking around the Citadel. Remember this scene? I don't know. I've been going through all the old manuscripts hoping to find something. And all I've learned is that the children of the forest used to hunt with dragonglass. The Lady Melisandre told me that death marches on the wall. I've seen it, Your Grace. Seen what? The army of the dead. And when they come... We have to know how to fight them. Keep reading, Samuel Tarly. Sam had been researching why Dragonglass was able to kill the White Walker, and some way, somehow, I think during the course of Season 7, he will discover the truth as to why it's able to defeat them. Number 4. Cersei will be killed. So I have no doubt in my mind Cersei is going to die in Season 7. The real question is how. I think there are a couple possibilities. First, I think Jaime may end up killing Cersei in the next season. 
She blew up a huge part of Keen's landing with wildfire and caused Tommen to jump out of a window. I think we will definitely see Jamie and Cersei clash over the course of the season, causing her to further descend into madness. Her actions as queen may become so irrational and psychotic that Jamie may be forced to stab her in the back, as he did the Mad King. It isn't too crazy to think that this would happen. Over the course of the series, we have seen that Jamie has some sort of a moral compass, and he has shown some signs of actually being a good person inside. Another prediction that sounds plausible is that Tyrion will end up killing Cersei. You know, they just both absolutely hate each other, and I'm sure Tyrion would like nothing more than to kill Cersei. This would fulfill the Valonqar prophecy that she will die at the hands of the Valonqar, or little brother. Everything else that Maggie the Frog said has come true so far. She didn't have any kids with Robert, he fathered a bunch of bastard children, and all of her children are now dead. But the prophecy could also be speaking of Jaime, as he was born a couple minutes after Cersei, making him her little brother too. But if I had to pick, I would say that Jaime will end up killing Cersei. Mainly because of the fact that she would never expect the father of her children, you know, her best friend through her whole life, to, to go and stab her in the back and betray her. Number 3. Jon and Daenerys will get married. So I say this assuming that Daenerys will make it to King's Landing and take over the city. And honestly, I think that's a safe assumption considering the fact that she has over 100,000 soldiers and three dragons. If that all comes to fruition, I don't think we see her go north to fight Jon. By that time, the White Walkers will probably be a real threat and both Jon and Daenerys will know that the battle for the Iron Throne is essentially meaningless if they aren't defeated. Knowing all that, Jon and Daenerys will form an alliance and get married to solidify Westeros. And it seems like Daenerys already knows that marriage is the best way to cement an alliance. If I'm going to rule in Westeros, I'll need to make alliances. And the best way to make alliances is with marriage. <laughs> There's no one else I can really think of that would be a better pick for Daenerys. Uh, Littlefinger might try to insert himself into the mix, but Varys would shut that shit down real quick. Number 2. Jon Snow is going to learn of his lineage. R plus L equals J was finally confirmed in the finale, and it's only a matter of time before Jon Snow finds out that his true parents are Rhaegar and Lyanna. I think this will, ha this will occur sometime during the next season, and I'm sure it will have a big impact on him and the people around him. I think there are two possible ways this could happen, one being through Howland Reed. He was the one who killed Arthur Dane from behind, and he most certainly knows the truth about Jon Snow's lineage. We haven't seen him yet in the series but it seems very likely that he will make an appearance sometime in the coming season. I also think it's possible that Bran somehow alerts Jon to his true parents. Number 1. The Wall Will Come Down So in my opinion, this is inevitable. I thought the wall was going to come down this season, but we didn't really get any story development in terms of the White Walkers. But the wall has to come down at some time. Jon Snow definitely isn't going to lead an army north of the wall to fight the White Walkers, so the wall will have to eventually come down for them to invade Westeros. The most popular theory going around right now is that the Horn of Winter, or the Horn of Jormund, has the power to destroy the wall, and Sam may have already found it. Time. Oh, must be Dragonglass. Dragonglass? The Maester's called it Obsidian. And although nothing more about the horn is shown in the show, the book does state that Sam still has the horn. In fact, Martin explains that after he bartered his passage to Old Town, Sam was down to his boots and blacks and small clothes, and the broken horn Jon Snow had found on the fist of the First Men. I think it's telling that Martin describes how Sam had bartered away all of his possessions, but still managed to keep the Horn of Winter with him on his voyage to Old Town. There has to be some significance there, otherwise Martin would not have specifically mentioned it. Another possibility is that Bran brings down the wall when he passes through. Bran was marked by the Night King, and it's possible that if he tries to pass the wall, it will in turn give the others the power to pass through it as well. We saw a similar event happen when Bran was first marked. The Night King! He saw me! He touched you. I don't know, he was close, but... He touched you. 
He knows you're here. He'll come for you. But he can't get in. He can now. His mark is on you. Before Bran was marked, the White Walkers would explode if they tried to enter the cave. But after the mark, there was nothing to stop them. A similar event might happen if Bran tries to go south to tell Jon of his lineage, unknowingly destroying the wall. And lastly, here's a bit of foreshadowing. Don't knock it down while I'm gone. I'll do my best. 